First off, I want to say thank you to everyone who heard our call to action and help recently and contributed in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we have received the funds that we needed to get a couple people started, and we've got some hires, and people are going to start over the next couple weeks to the next couple months. So you're going to meet Aiden very soon, who's coming on full-time to help with video work, uh, as well as to do carpentry stuff. Scott is starting shortly after him, and Scott is a Finnish carpenter. And then we've got Ross, who you probably remember from later videos, a volunteer. He's coming for a whole month. George Henninen's coming up for almost three months. Um, Satchel's coming out to help with the electrical. So we've got a really big crew. We've got a lot of talent coming in, and there's no way that we would be able to afford them without the assistance that we've gotten. So thank you so much to everyone who's contributed and continues to contribute. Uh, it's allowing us to hire these hands, and, and that's going to make making launch in June and having mom there a, a real possibility. So thank you. I, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Along with that, we have some really big news on other fronts, which is that we are changing our launch location, not our launch date. But Mystic Seaport has taken on some incredible wins recently. They've got the LA Dunton up on land at the shipyard, and they've also taken on the restoration of Coronet. She's been moved from Iris to there. That means that the shipyard is really, really full. And the day that we had envisioned closing off the shipyard and being launched by way of the ship lift, is not going to be possible this coming summer. We had explored other options. Those didn't work out. But we have teamed up with the town of Mattapoisett in Massachusetts, which is one hour, 20 minutes away. And we'll be able to launch there on June 17th as planned, but also carry on the party into June 18th. So. Yeah, I'm excited for Mattapoisa. It's It's a great open area. It doesn't have quite the infrastructure that Mystic has. Uh, but there's a boatyard just down the road, and one of the owners, Ed, has graciously allowed us to stay there and do some uprigging. Um, it's very protected from the weather, and they're going to let us do a two-day event, which is huge. We're really excited about doing that. And Mystic, like we said, is not that far away, so we're going to launch there June 17th, hang out for the 18th and make our way down to Mystic so that we are there for the wooden boat show. So if you were thinking about coming and visiting us at the boat show, fear not, we will still be there. Also, if you've already made arrangements to have accommodations in Mystic, or if you're wondering about what the area around Mattapoisett has to offer for anything that you might need while you're staying, just email us, let us know what you need, and I'll be happy to help you out with that. We'll also be launching a resources page. We also have more updates to come about when we're going to be uprigging, if you wanted to come by and see that, and also um, any of the other things that are going to be going on during the day so that you can plan your trip. Yeah, so stay tuned. There will be a lot more to come. Um, it is a big change, we know, but thankfully the dates are the same, and we're really excited about the venue and we're really excited about hosting everybody for two days. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to open up a lot more opportunities. We look forward to seeing you. I'm at the point where I need to figure out what projects only I can do and what projects make sense to pass on. The hatches, the companionway, the rudder and the diesel are all past their pigs in space stage. So they're past conceptualizing. Uh, and at this point, you know, this goes here and this needs to be fared to there and this needs to be put on and this needs to be built. So I feel confident that those are projects that I can put on the back burner for now. And when these folks come in, I can say, here was where I left off. These are all the materials, get cracking. Hence, working on the nav, and I really don't like having all of these uncompleted projects, and I really want to just finish one of them. Um, but I think for progress and moving forward and making the most use of the team that's coming. So first off, i got to just unbox all this stuff and start playing with it and figuring out who's on first, and uh, then we can start building some housing for a, for a nav station. What we got going on is we have two VHF radios. So I've got a real little one that we can take on shore adventures if we need to call back to the boat for a ride or something, and a bigger handheld. 
charging ports. I think we'll go like that. I got another one. And I have this beautiful little mahogany box from Victoria with these drawers. I don't think I'm going to reuse the housing. It just doesn't seem worth it. But I am going to reuse the three little drawers. Uh, and I have the latches to go with them. And then in the back, we've got a card reader. I'll tuck up in the corner. And the blue sea breaker panels. And the chart plotter. And I put that down at the bottom so that I can lay my arm on the chart table while I mess around with the touch screen. I put it up and I thought that that was gonna become really tiring and also maybe difficult if the boat's rocking and rolling. Uh, so I put that at the bottom. Above the breakers here, we can put a panel for the sea frost and we can put our readout for all the electronic or the, the batteries. And above the taller breaker panel, we can put the one for the water maker. I'm gonna build in these fuse blocks. So they'll go behind a little door and we can run, all of the nav gear should be run through a fuse. So we can run it through here and if I think for some reason you know, something's not working and we need to check a fuse, it should just be open a little door and be able to see all the fuses. It should make that really easy. And then we have the Garmin hub, the GMS-10. So this allows all of the nav gear, the radar, the satellite compass, will all talk to this. And then this will essentially talk to the chart plotter and the GMI-20 that's going to go in the cockpit. And that way the two chart plotters aren't competing, trying to read the radar. Uh, and then this should help streamline all of that. And that can get attached right to the clamp in the back and be hidden behind everything. We've got a fan to go up here and then that will fold up flush and flat and you don't want it in use. And then last but not least, a red and white light on a long articulated arm that we can move around. So I got all the panels drawn out here on a scrap piece of plywood. And these aren't meant to be excruciatingly perfect. What I'm really trying to figure out is, like I drew the chart plotter and that should really come over a little bit to get centered under the main panel. Uh, and to make sure that height wise will fit, we can trim a little bit off the bottom and the top here. And this allowed me to realize that two inches around for everything will let me space all of these out nicely. And I think just having everything mounted in one flat plane like this is gonna be fine. I think it'll, it'll keep it pretty simple. I think it's gonna look decent. Everything should mount relatively flush. So I think we should go grab some cherry and uh, see if we can start getting this frame built out. saw this big old wide wild one and I thought, ooh, maybe I can skip all of this joinery and just cut out some holes. But unfortunately, it's a bit checked, which I'm not super worried about. I mean, we could always just fill those with epoxy and have it add character. But this big one down the middle, no matter kind of how you cut it, lands right in here. And I'm just worried with all of this squirrely grain that it might be faster and easier now to cut these out, but I don't have faith in this holding together. If this was a little tighter, if these checks were a little smaller, I might go for it. So I got some cherry picked out, rip it through the, uh, the planer and the joiner and start getting some, some material we can actually work with.
Ah, not too shabby. Looking good, huh? That's coming. Gonna make it? Always. Where are you coming from? We live in Westfield. Okay. And we were up in the Amherst, and I said, oh, wait a minute. We, I know it's on Bachelor Road. Yep. So, so we just bought a couple of t-shirts and gave you a donation. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So really we've been that. watching. Beautiful. Every day. Nice. <laughs> I was 30 years younger and I would think about this. <laughs> yeah. That's why I made a strip canoe last year. Oh, very cool. So, like, wow, boats are great. <laughs> They're all, yeah, curves are fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow, this very is amazing. Nice. Amazing, amazing. Cool. Well, thanks for stopping by. While that big slab of cherry was still on the workbench, Steve worked on a quick corner shelf for the VHF radio. Afterwards, it was back to the wood pile to find and cut the vertical styles for the nav panel. I built the outer frame first. Those are just half lapped in the corners glued those up last night. So now I have a rigid frame that I can start laying everything into. And I cut some vertical styles here. And what I'm trying to figure out right now is exactly where I want these vertical styles to land so I know where to cut the half laps in the back of this frame. And this seems to be pretty good. I'll be able to land all of these different things on here and to be able to get them a bit centered because they're all a little bit different size. So now that these are all where they need to be, I can get rid of all of the instruments, make my marks where each of these are, and start cutting half laps. Once all the vertical styles are in, then I can do I got one, two, three, four horizontal ones to put in. So yeah, the first bottom styles here fit. And they are fairly snug at this point. I swear they go in there. All right, right now we're looking at the back of it. So if these fits aren't excruciatingly perfect, it's really not the end of the world. The fits that matter that you're going to see are the ones across the front here. We'll check our spacing. So. Four and a sixteenth, four and an eighth. So we want to pull this one that way a little bit. A little bit too much. Oh no, perfect. Ben's apparently been editing out every time the pencil lead breaks because I use the mechanical pencil, mm -hmm. and apparently people think that I have some like magic pencil that the lead never breaks on me. All right, now we cut them out.
just a little deeper. I glued up the panel last night and now it is trimmed so we've got a little bit of play here up and down and we'll figure out exactly how far back or how far forward it's going to come once I actually have the panels in there because they all get recessed and we need enough room in the back for all of those wires going to all of those panels which is going to be like a lot of wires so we got to have room and this is eventually going to get hinged on this end so that when you do need to do work on the panels, you can just swing that out like that, throw yourself up on the table and have access to all of these without having to necessarily unmount them and hang them out the front. And if you look real closely, you'll notice that my fits on this are not excruciatingly perfect. And I definitely could have spent more time and been more careful and gotten those to fit better. But I'm honestly trying to strike the balance between them looking good and how long they're actually going to be used for. So it makes sense for like the center line of the boat and other parts that, you know, ideally could go 100 years. There's no way on earth that this nav panel is going to go 100 years. It might not even go five years. And the reason I say that is two years after launch we might get struck by lightning and it might fry all the electrical gear and we need to get a new chart plotter and we need to get a new breaker panel and I guarantee you they are going to be ever so slightly different sized. This is kind of a balance between it looking nice and knowing that it's going to get redone at some point and I don't want to cry when that day comes. David who's one of the regular volunteers his friend recently inherited a panel sander so this is headed off tonight to go get sanded uh, which will make everything perfectly flush across the face, which will be really nice. It's a quick and easy way to do that if you have that kind of machine. And then I can go through and inlay all the panels. But I'm going to shift my focus now to this corner right up here where the VHF is going to live. The VHF is going to go inside it. The wires will come down the corner and get hidden. And we have a great little cubby for storage up top. And lastly today, Steve gathered more cherry to build the new housing for Victoria's little shelves that will go to the left of the main nav panel with the charging ports and the card reader for the chart plotter.
This is all pretty thin cherry and none of this is terrifically structural. I mean, it doesn't need to carry a ton of load. So what we're gonna do is use our friend, the Thick So Fast here out of the caulking gun where we can do it nice and neat. And I'm just gonna glue this thing together in place, put it back together with tape clamps. And then once the glue's kicked, we'll be able to drill and add fasteners where it makes sense to add fasteners. And that should weigh more than suffice. It is amazing how fast it is to do butt joints and glue things together compared to all of the intricacies of the build. And our main nav panel will butt up against this piece of cherry here. Put in our Garmin card reader. So when you need to update the chart plotters, you can just put the, the cards right in there and it'll go to the hub and it'll go to the chart plotters. So you don't have to access the chart plotters. That'll be really nice. You don't have to access the back to put new cards in. And then we've got a whole bank of cigarette plugs and USBs here. So the ones on the right are twin USBs. And the one on the left is your cigarette style 12 volt plug, which could also have a plug put in for more USBs. So this will provide plenty of power here for the navitation and the galley. And I know this is a lot of plugs, but cameras and microphones and all of that, they need a lot of plugs. So we've got a, a bank in the boathouse here and a bank in the house where we have like eight USBs and everything gets all plugged in at the same time. And so this will let us do that on the nav table. I'd rather have extras and not use them than need them and not have them. So let's get this thing uh, taken apart, taped off and glued together.